So this is a design we've been working on um, for an existing room. We didn't design the cinema room and we didn't install it. Um, we've gone back and done some audio calibration and some video calibration and I must say the, uh, the video picture in this room is really, really nice. I've removed the screen at the moment so that you can see the speakers. He's got an acoustically transparent screen. Unfortunately, it's been a bit placed a bit too close to the speakers. You really do need, you know, on a perforated screen, you need a 30 centimetre clearance to stop comb filtering. But uh, I'll just pop the screen back in. Um, the reason I wanted to show you the speakers there is because you could see where, where the um, reflections are measured from. So now I'm going to add in the uh, first order reflections from the left, centre and right speakers. You can see them here um, and how they're moving around the room. Now these ones are flying out the window and um, these are flying out into the kitchen here. Um, so we're losing sound and we're bouncing sound around the room. I haven't put every feature into the room because um, this is a fairly quick job. Uh, there are some half round panels at the back that sort of don't really belong there. So we're, we're going to have a look at that. What can we do with a room like this? It's, these are actually not far from the original colours. Um, and this room could be amazing uh, acoustically and, and visually as well. So the first thing I would suggest is we're getting a lot of light spattered around from the um, projector um, and that's washing out the picture on the screen. So the first thing we're going to do is just darken up the walls a bit and improve the look there. So that's step one. Then I would suggest that we go for, you know, at least uh, a carpet that um, perhaps is not too dark but that is not going to contribute to the excess light in the room so the thing starts to feel more like a cinema. Now, the problem is these are sliding doors and they actually intrude into the room so I can't put an acoustic panel there. I could block this window out and hang panels over it but that's going to look uneven because I can't put panels over these doors here because you need to walk through them. So what are we going to do? Okay, now one of the first temptations here is to just go nuts and put acoustic treatment everywhere but if you put too much acoustic treatment in a room you kill it. And what people don't seem to understand is that, um, you know, just shotgun treatment with, a, with acoustics can do more damage than good. And if you make the room very dead, then its sense of space and its soundstage collapses and it just becomes uh, a room that has no character at all and cannot produce a really good surround sound field either. So the first step is to add acoustic panels at the first order reflection points here. So we've captured the reflections of these speakers and um, those will be compressed fiberglass panels with an air gap behind them and they will uh, be broad spectrum. So they will um, treat the first order reflections. Now we don't want to kill them all so we just want to specifically target those and now we don't want to, as I said, you know, I keep repeating myself at the moment, we don't want to go nuts um, and one of the ways to do that is with the um, uh, sensible application of acoustic curtains. Right? Now these are not ordinary curtains. You can't just put ordinary curtains in a room. And I see a lot of home theatres where they're all the way along the wall. One of the worst things you can do for two reasons. One, curtains of the wrong construction are just notch filters. They knock out small areas of frequency. The room sounds different so everybody thinks it's fantastic. But in reality, you've just killed your audio right you have crushed your sound stage your envelopments disappeared and um, people think it's great because the room sounds dull and when you clap your hands there isn't an echo guys that's not the right approach so we need to have a judicious use of acoustic treatment so these are acoustic curtains with an interlayer in them and I've used them as little as possible just to cover the doorway and the sliding door behind it and then um, that's it and then I've mirrored that on the other side um, and using as little of the wall as possible. I really don't want to cover much more than 25% of the surface area of the wall, so even this is a bit too much. But the way I'm going to compensate for that and keep the room a little bit alive is I'm not going to put acoustic treatment on the ceiling. Um, so at least some of those reflections will remain intact. You have to balance this out, folks, and, and just throwing acoustic panels at a room is a really good way to take a room from bad to equally bad. It just sounds different. You have to understand that because you put, um, for example, foam tiles in a room, 
and then you, you go, you clap your hands or you make a noise and you go, that sounds different, I've made a difference. You have made a difference, but it's not necessarily a good one. You have to understand dynamics and envelopment and presence and all of the things that go into making a room absolutely sound fantastic. Um, and it's not just guesswork. Okay, so at the back of the room now, we have these reflections. The speakers are aimed straight into the room. So all three speakers now are firing straight to the back of the room, bouncing back. And you've got two sources of comb filtering now. One is through the closeness of the screen to the speakers, and the other one is the reflections off the back wall. Now at the moment, they're more being absorbed by the half rounds that are there than, than being brought back into the room. So we want to treat that carefully as well. So. I've put diffusers there. Now I'm just going to change the back color of the back wall just for a second so you can see the diffusers there. These are DC2 Skyline diffusers um, and you can see they've got they've got a fair bit of character in them. In fact we take little you know bobbly heads and things like that and put them in here and as trinkets and they look fantastic. Little Star Wars um, trinkets and uh, characters and it, it looks really really great. You can get you can you can paint these it's a hell of a task but traditionally they come predominantly in, in black or white. Okay, so um, the other thing that you can do in a room like this is either around the curtains or around the acoustic panels and around here, we could add a, uh, a nice uh, RGB uh, LED lighting system. Um, and, you know, that's it. That's all we really needed to do to make this room look and sound absolutely fantastic. Now, obviously, colors are a personal choice but we've reduced the amount of ambient light in the room. We've uh, improved the acoustics no end. We've reduced and managed the comb filtering. We've kept the sound stage and the dynamics in the room. You know, for a fairly quick fix, uh, we have improved this room from being a very uh, sort of average theater acoustically to being something that is going to be extremely enjoyable and is practical too. You can still move in and out of the room. Uh, the, the curtains add character, but we haven't crushed the sound to death. So there you go, folks. Uh, if you've got a room something like this, this might give you a few ideas. But please don't just throw these, um, these in willy-nilly. The other thing is that we haven't shown in this room is the management of subwoofers and bass. I've just finished a job with a client where he had four subwoofers and it sounded absolutely shocking. The subwoofers had never been located properly and they've never been tuned. I'll be having uh, a video produced with that client shortly and you'll, uh, you'll get to understand the difference between having bass and having really good low frequency clarity in your sound. So uh, look, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope it's been useful and this is just one solution for one kind of room and um, Oh, actually, there's one more thing that's really, really interesting. The customer here, I haven't got them in here, unfortunately, because it's not part of the, the, this, this job, but he's got some uh, freestanding uh, bookshelf speakers for his surrounds. And um, we don't have enough room to put them here because they're going to be right in the ear of, of the person sitting in this chair and right in the ear of the person sitting in this chair. Now, here's a trick that uh, Jerry LeMay taught me from the HAA and it's amazingly effective and what we've done is we've moved the speakers behind here and we've aimed the tweeters at this wall here and we've taken into account the angle of incidence and reflection and we fire the, um, the left and right surrounds from behind you off the wall here and into the ears of the listeners here. The long range means that you get more even sound of the along the distance from the seats instead of getting a very loud sound here you get a um, uh, an exponential drop off in sound as, as it leaves the speaker so very loud here quieter 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 but it drops off less per distance as you go so by having it travel some distance to the wall here and then to the seat these people actually get quite even sound from a speaker that's in fact very very close it's a very clever trick and it adds to the diffuseness of the surround sound field. Now, if you're going, ha, that's ridiculous, you'd never do that with a surround speaker. Well, you tell me, what is a, uh, an Atmos um, equipped speaker other than a speaker that fires up to the roof, bounces off the roof and back down to you? The only problem with those is if your speakers and your seats aren't in the right position, you've got to think about that sound as a laser beam, then unfortunately the Atmos is just spraying off into the room in all the wrong places. Um, it's not as easy as that. 
but um, there is a precedent for this. Um, Dolby is doing it with Atmos. We've been doing it with surround sound speakers for years, so nothing new there, folks. Um, so if you've got um, if you've got uh, bookshelf speakers and you're, you've got them sitting left and right of you here, then try that. Pop them behind you, turn them around, face them at this wall, aim them so they bounce off the wall, and the angles have to be equal. So an equal angle hitting the wall, equal angle leaving the wall, and aim them probably at the middle of the room here, so the reflection at the middle of the room here. And you'll have to increase the levels, so you'll have to go in and just adjust the levels in your amplifier because it will have dropped off a little bit, but you'll end up with amazingly clear, uh, amazingly balanced surround sound with no exit door effects. So there's a tip for nothing. Um, it pays to watch these videos through to the end sometimes. Thank you very much for watching, folks. Hope you've enjoyed it. And, um, you know, each time we try and bring you a bit more information uh, so that you can learn more about designing and building your own home theatre. If you want us to help you out, obviously our services are available and we love getting the best results out of a room.